Today on Good Friday, we tend to think a lot about the cross. And that's a good thing to do. We should think about the cross. Because on that cross, Jesus won our salvation. We have forgiveness because Jesus died. And on Easter Day, we tend to think a lot about the empty tomb. And that's also a good thing to do. Because that empty tomb shows us that Jesus is living. And when we believe, we find life in him. But what about Saturday? What about the day between, the time when Jesus was dead? It tends to get lost in the shuffle. In fact, we don't even really have a name for it. All we call it is Holy Saturday. But it's something that we refer to all the time, when, especially when we talk about it in the creeds. We say that Jesus was crucified, died, and was buried, and on the third day he rose again. And yet, despite talking about it so much, we tend to forget it, passing over it in our hurry towards Easter. But Christians, we should not forget this time, the time between the cross and the empty tomb. And John shows us why we should not forget it, because he spends just as much time talking about what happens after Jesus' death as he does talking about when Jesus is on the cross. This time is important indeed. So what does John say about it? Well, first of all, he tells us that on Good Friday, the Jews go to Pilate with a very simple request. Break the legs of the crucified so that they may be taken away. Don't leave them on the cross overnight. Now, the reason for doing this was to make it so that they would die very quickly. The way that the cross was designed, it was supposed to prolong suffering as long as possible. And as long as your legs were still intact, you could push yourself up so that you could continue to breathe. But with a broken leg, you couldn't do that anymore. You would suffocate. And death would come in minutes rather than in days. But this wasn't really the reason why they wanted to do this. The reason why they wanted to do this came from the Old Testament. We are told in Deuteronomy chapter 21, And if a man has committed a crime punishable by death, and he is put to death, and you hang him on a tree, his body shall not remain all night on the tree, but you shall bury him the same day, for a hanged man is cursed by God. You shall not defile your land that the Lord your God is giving you for an inheritance. So in other words, their real concern was for their own purity. They wanted to make sure that no curse from God would fall upon the land. But again, that was sheer hypocrisy on their part. They cared nothing about defiling the land by killing an innocent man. They claimed to be following after God by doing this, even as they sent God himself to the cross. But at any rate, they want to make sure that Jesus is dead. There's, Jesus will not get away from the cross, even barely alive. But Christians, already we can see the first reason why Christ being dead is so important. Because even this law from Deuteronomy pointed towards him and what he was going through for us. Paul makes this very clear in Galatians when he says, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who is hanged on a tree. Jesus took our curse upon himself. The curse that is ours because we have broken God's law. Christians, by nature, we are lawbreakers. There is none of us who is good, none who is righteous, no, not one. And so the curse of the law was laid upon us justly, cut off from God, worthy of death and hell. And there is no way for us to escape this curse all on our own. Nothing that we are going to do will be able to save us. But Jesus took that curse on himself. He became the curse for us 
even though he had done nothing wrong. And because Jesus took the curse on himself, we have been set free. We are now able to follow after God. His lifeless body hanging on the cross and laid into the tomb took the curse along with it and brought the blessing of God instead. Because as Paul goes on to say right after that verse, so that in Christ Jesus the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles so that we might receive the promised spirit through faith. So that's the first reason, then, why Jesus being dead is so important. His death sets us free. But John goes on to talk about the grisly work of the soldiers. He says that they came to the two who were crucified with Jesus and broke their legs. But when they came to Jesus, they did not break his legs because he was already dead. And Christians do not think that the soldiers somehow made a mistake with this. They knew what a dead body looks like. Death was their business. They've been around death so much, they know when somebody is dead just by looking at him. It's obvious that Jesus is gone. But they have their orders, so they have to make doubly sure. And so one of them pierces Jesus through the side with a spear. Now, I don't want you to think that this was just poking him to see if he was going to move, the way that we might poke somebody who is asleep. Now, this was a violent piercing designed to puncture his heart. No one would ever be able to survive a wound like that. And once he was pierced, John tells us, blood and water came gushing forth. All of these things happened to show that Jesus has truly died. But here John shows us the second reason why Jesus being dead is so important. All of these things happened, he says, in order to fulfill the scriptures. John points us to, towards two in particular. The first one, where he says that not one of the, his bones will be broken, comes from a passage like Exodus chapter 12, where it is talking about the Passover lamb. Exodus 12 says, It shall be eaten in one house. You shall not take any of the flesh outside the house, and you shall not break any of its bones. So Jesus' body being intact in that way, so that none of his bones were broken, shows that he is the true Passover lamb. Because just like those lambs were eaten whole without any of their bones being broken, Jesus' death on the cross shows that he has died to forgive us our sins. God passes over us, and we are delivered from judgment by Jesus' death on the cross. And the second passage that John refers to here, that they will look on him whom they have pierced, comes from Zechariah, where it says this, And I will pour out on the house of David and the, in, in the inhabitants of Jerusalem a spirit of grace and pleas for mercy, so that when they look on me, on him whom they have pierced, they shall mourn for him as one mourns for an only child and weep bitterly over him as one weeps over a firstborn. But the mourning that Zechariah is talking about is the mourning of repentance. It is looking towards the one that has been pierced, and realizing that it was my sins who put him there, that it was my sins that made his death necessary in the first place. And yet this mourning, this repentance, leads to life. Because I don't think that it's a mistake or just an accident that five verses later in the book of Zechariah, the prophet says this, on that day there shall be a fountain opened for the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to cleanse them from sin and uncleanness. What greater fountain is there, Christians, than the fountain of Christ's own side, pouring forth that water and blood so that we would be forgiven? A fountain filled with blood which washes away 
all of our sins, the blood which makes us clean. And both of these passages also show us why the blood and water are so important. Because these things coming forth from his side, Christians, show that there is life through his death. Because the blood which comes forth shows us that that blood covers over all of our sins. Because without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. But when we are washed in that blood, made white in the blood of the Lamb, then we have life in his name. We walk in a new life before God forever. And the water which poured forth from his side is a sign of the gift of the Spirit. As Jesus says earlier in the Gospel of John, whoever believes in me, as the Scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. That living water, Jesus tells us, is the Holy Spirit. So that when we are given the Spirit, we believe in God. Jesus died so that the Spirit is now ours. Jesus died so that the Spirit now lives within us, and we have eternal life in God. That's the second reason why Jesus' death, being dead, is so important. His death gives us life. But we see the last reason towards the end of this reading when we meet Joseph of Arimathea. John tells us that Joseph was a member of the Sanhedrin, but he didn't go along with what all of the others were doing. But he goes to Pilate to ask for the body of Jesus. Nicodemus also, who we meet earlier in the Gospel of John, in John chapter 3, comes to help him bringing along with him the spices that are needed for the burial. Seventy-five pounds and the linen that was used here was the typical way of burying somebody in those days. But 75 pounds of spices is not cheap. They went to very great expense to do this for Jesus. And it was also a great risk on their part, too, because Jesus was not owed a proper burial. People who were crucified in those days were typically just thrown into a common grave, basically thrown into a ditch. Their bodies were discarded more than anything. And doing this would cause the other members of the Sanhedrin to look at them in a different way. They would probably make their lives very miserable because of it. Their reputation is on the line. But these two show us the last reason why Jesus being dead is so important. Because his death changes lives. Joseph is described as being a secret disciple, somebody who was afraid of the Jews. He wasn't open about being a Christian. He didn't want anybody to know. But once Jesus died, his fear is gone. He goes boldly to ask for the body, despite all of the risk, showing to Jesus the honor that he deserved in his death. Nicodemus also was one who is described as very fearful, because in John chapter 3, Nicodemus comes to Jesus by night so that nobody else will know. But with the death of Jesus, his fear is also gone. He goes to help boldly not worrying about the risk. And he gives to Jesus the burial of a rich man. Because Christians, Jesus being dead transforms our lives. It helps us to understand what we could not understand before. The death of Jesus makes the fearful bold. The death of Jesus makes enemies into brothers. The death of Jesus turns sinners into saints because the death of Jesus gives us the Holy Spirit who makes us new. And that is the third reason why Jesus being dead is so important because his death changes us forever. 
So Christians, it's good to think about the cross. We should do it, because there our salvation was won. It is good for us to think about the empty tomb. We should do that too, because we have new life in him. But it is also good for us to think about the time between the two. Let us not forget about Holy Saturday. Because Jesus being in the grave means that we have been cleansed, set free, and made new in God forever. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, whose three-day rest in the tomb has brought life and immortality to light, pour out the Holy Spirit upon us this night so that the victory which you have won over death and the grave may be ours forever with you. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.